Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Floral Learningism. Wanted to take a sneak peek at GIMP 2.99.2, which is just the predecessor right before version 3. So we're going to take a look, an advanced look at what's going to come, some of the exciting things that are being built, and we're going to do that right now. So once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Learningism. If this is your first time joining in, I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technology so that you can know about them and make good use of them, as well as build up a, a learning community, a community of learners, uh, so we can share information and make each other stronger. So again, we're gonna be looking at GIMP 2.99.2, which is the, <laughs> I don't know if it's the predecessor, but um, it's one of the last predecessors before version three is uh, is coming. It's on the horizon, yay. And there's some really exciting stuff, so let's dig into that. All right, so uh, I'm looking at the development version, which is very clearly uh, not stable, not final release, but we can get a good look at what's gonna be there. All right, first thing you're probably gonna notice is that the interface has been modernized a little bit. And I have to say that different from my initial gut reaction when I first laid eyes on GIMP, um, and that was 2.10, um, actually somewhere around there, uh, the interface really kind of confused me, but kind of keeping in line with the experience I've had and then looking at this, it looks crisper, it looks sharper, and it has like that that crystallizing click moment you know when you look at it and it just starts to intuitively make sense that's what i got when i fired this up and i saw the icons i saw the layouts the default dockers um even the blue which they say is temporary but i like the blue the other blue highlights of the um adjustment bars and things here I, I like those things but they say that's going to change so oh well I like blue, but I really like the way this is going and the direction that development is taking. Um, there is one kind of catch to that in that as I hover over things, the tool tips, I feel like they're a little too bold because while it does tell you the keyboard shortcut, which is nice, it, it confuses me because when I see something that bold pop up, my reaction is, okay, well, that's a menu. It's actually not. It's just a tool tip. You know, I do still have to click the tool to figure out what's in it. Um, so that, you know, is, is okay. Um, you have to click and hold and then select what you want. But um, yeah, otherwise, I really think this is going in a really good direction. And I'm really excited to see what else is, is going to be um, refined within this, this release with the interface. Um, a big deal that's come up is multi-layer selection and manipulation, which is really cool because previous versions could not do that. Uh, if we add in some layers here of things, I think we have to start a new drawing first. And I'm just going to pick something because this we're just demonstrating here. So uh, first one, fine. Okay. We're not afraid of big sizes. <laughs> All right. So starting with a layer, add another layer. And what we can do I'm going to see if we can drag this over just a little bit. There we go. Is now I have the ability to select both of those using the shift or control. Control click, shift click with a range. Uh, we can now select a range or individual layers and manipulate them all together if we could. We can relocate them, group them, uh, all kinds of nifty things. So let's just see. I'm going to draw a couple things here and let's just put some some content on here and I need to actually get a brush and not the move here. Let's do that. So we're going to do that on that layer, click the next one over and let's draw that. And let's just say that this is a really rough example, but let's just say that I wanted to enact an edit uh, throughout all those layers, let's just say perhaps, okay, well, all the way through, there actually should be an opening through all these. I want to put something behind it that I want to pop through, something like that. So I could now take that space and we could, here, I'm just going to do an elliptical select, and I'm going to select those first two layers and 
select that space and I'm going to delete. And there we go. It punches a hole through all the selected layers all at the same time. So that's actually a really cool productivity thing and that you no longer have to individually select layers and work your way through that. I know some tools did allow you uh, to interact. Some tools did allow you to do that over multiple layers, but now it's just natively built in. Um, so you can do that. <laughs> so that's cool stuff, working with multi-layer selection and manipulation. The other thing is that there's some exciting developments with its API coming around, uh, particularly me being a primary window user. Uh, I saw that there's going to be some JavaScript additions, interestingly enough, with the API alongside Python. Um, and that's some really cool technology that I'm excited to watch. Um, if we look at their publication of that, yeah, there's a couple different odds and ends of that. Um, but it's possible to build plugins and things around JavaScript. And I, I'm big into JavaScript because I did a lot of web development. And that, to me, just seems like a fantastic end and, and entryway for me to, to explore. I, I really can't wait for that to come around. To complement that, you're probably familiar with the concept of GOAT exercises from other things. In the Windows version, there wasn't so much there to do, but they promised a lot of build out with this, this GOAT exercises idea. And I can't show it to you now, unfortunately, because it's actually, even in the, the latest development release here, 2.99.2, uh, it's not there yet. I can see it here, but I can't actually click on anything yet. And these are cool things because they're like little demo modules that actually help you generate and build the code depending on what you're trying to do to, to build a plugin. So that's, again, this is a great option to help people make the most out of a tool, uh, really leveraging um, all different kinds of skill sets, whether you're going to use what's built in or give people the ability to tack on and build on and expand and even just try out and learn new things with the tool itself. I think it's fantastic. It's, it's just a, such an exciting area of development to watch and um, explore. So check out the other uh, release notes. Um, I will put a link in the description below. There is a lot here about how the framework is changing. So it can get pretty technical. I'm covering the things that are kind of focusing on the art enhancements and a little bit on the language API piece of that. Um, so don't get intimidated by that. Um, but uh, yeah, know it's there. And if you're feeling adventurous, I'll put a link to the download uh, <laughs> link for development. You can try out some of this stuff as well and just kind of get a sense of, of what's coming and be excited along with me, I hope. All right. So again, it's there. Um, if you were worried about it, I did notice that as I put the development build on there, it maintains both versions. So right now I'm obviously in development, but if I were to look out here on my desktop, I still have version 2.10.20. Uh, which will work alongside of this. Uh, so no fear if you just wanted to run them side by side, whatever stable version you have, you can try out development without fear of destruction. All right, so that's that. All right, so that's really the, the gist of uh, things that are coming, exciting developments uh, with GIMP and the official stable release version will be three. We won't have to do with two that something that's just for development leading up to that major release. Uh, so version three, keep an eye out for it very soon and join in the conversation about this. If there's something I haven't covered that should be surfaced, that is uh, um, noteworthy and can get us all excited again, rally around this, please do share it in the comments or ask a question. Uh, I do enjoy looking at the feedback and things that we can um, explore and make each other stronger. Consider giving me a thumbs up if this was helpful to kind of give you a quick view of the horizon of GIMP and the, the new exciting things coming. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome things that are coming along on this channel. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I'll see you at the next video.